Okay, YouTube viewers, another day. I've cleaned everything up, I've greased everything, and I've got one hub assembly ready to go back on. I've got another one where I have to install a race, I have to install the studs, so I'll take you along and show you what's involved in that task. First, you want a suitable work surface on which to install the studs into the hub. Old brick drum makes a great surface. Because the hub front hub fits right in. Now this is going on a front Dana 44, which is the same axle used on Wagoneers and the full size Cherokees, except that the hub is going to use eight lug eight lugs and the studs. This is from a half ton Dana 44. This is from a three quarter ton Dana 44. You can tell there's a bit of size difference. Plus there's eight of these and this rotor is one inch bigger in diameter. And the axle tubes are half inch thick rather than quarter inch wall. Anyway, they're bigger. You drop these studs into the appropriate holes. They've got knurls on them, little splines, and they're going to match up with the splines in the original hub. I'm adding a new rotor, which is just clamped between the hub and the head of this stud, this lug stud. You drop them in until you feel the splines kind of lining up. And this is slightly, I gotta tap this edge of the rotor down so it's flush. And then I'm just gonna go around with this drift. It's about, it's got a head about the size of this indent in the stud. So I'll just put this down into the hole, feel to where the lines grab and then just go around slowly tapping them a little at a time till they get started go around so it lines up you can feel the spline starting to bite but the hub is still loose or the uh, rotor is still loose on the hub. It's not down tight yet. And here they're start to, starting to bottom out. When they start bouncing off the drum, you're bottoming, them out, bottoming out. You know you're all the way down. It's not going any further. I think this one has a little bit more to go. You definitely feel the difference once it bottoms out. Just starts bouncing off the drum. Go around. If it bounces off the drum on every hit, you know you're seated. The next thing is going to be to put a race in here. I don't know if you can see the old race here had a pretty nasty groove worn in it that wasn't going to get any better so time for a new race and a new bearing and this you want to drive in i've got a race driver from a set i don't know where i got it from had it for years This fits perfectly on that race to drive it in solid, drive it in square. So, I'm 
and again it'll start bouncing when it seats it's a little shoulder in that bore that it's going to seat on yep that's seated the bearing is dry I just bought a brand new one and I had to grease it up and people like greasing it with grease on their palms and there's other kinds that use a grease gun to force grease through it I thought I had that grease gun set up but I also discovered I have this it's called a what is it called a handy packer forgot I even had this but this has a little piston with holes in it that force grease up through it when you push down on it and that will force grease up through the bearing and you'll see it emerge from the other side of these rollers so I don't know if you can see from that angle you gotta push down pretty straight and then grease will start squeezing out from between the rollers when enough is squeezed out you can take it out of there no nope. take some of this extra grease and use that to grease the race you always want to grease the race before you put new bearings in or old bearings that you cleaned up and this extra grease you can wipe on the outside of the bearing And you're all set. Relatively simple, quick way to grease up your new bearings. It's still a mess, it's always a mess, but less of a mess. So put that in there, rotate it so that grease is all around those rollers in the bearing and it's ready to go one final bit and that's the seal that keeps this bearing retained and also keeps dirt and grease out from inside this bore that same seal driver that I used to drive in the race is now going to be flipped around it's the perfect size on the other side for driving in the seal. It's got this little retaining nut. Doesn't have to be super tight. And this, you want to get started. going in straight and that's flush with the edge of the bore that's what I'm looking for and that's ready to go on the spindle and now I got to get that spindle on the axle that's my next task let's go up front and I'll show you how you do that time to reassemble the spindle First, clean off everything as best you can. Clean out this bore. Probably got some rust on it. Now's the time to replace your axle U joint if that's at all questionable. This one moves freely in all directions, seems to be in good shape. Clean everything up. up that one and wipe it down the first thing going on is going to be this seal this rubber seal here rides against this part of the spindle right here and seals dirt and 
mud and everything from getting inside there. So I want a little bit of grease on its face where it's going to contact that inside of the spindle. Then it just slides up around and seats on this little shield here. There we go. Push it in as far as you can. Next is going to be this washer with a little bevel. This washer goes on this way with the bevel toward the inside of the truck. Want to get grease on it. On both faces. Goes just like that. And then this next surface on this stub shaft is where the stub shaft rides on these needle bearings inside the spindle. You want to make sure those needle bearings are greased. Crash day here in the neighborhood. So you get to hear the garbage trucks backing up and down the streets around here. There we go. So I got a lot of grease in there. And finally, this seal here sits right inside, keeps dirt and dust out of that little spindle roller bearing assembly. And then that just slides right on. And one other thing you might want to do, you see that spindle seal goes there. This surface is going to sit inside that surface. It might be a good idea to put some anti-seize around there so that it slides in and doesn't freeze up. So it took a bit to knock this spindle out last time. You don't have to do that. That's a bonus. A thin coating. And may as well, while I'm in here, get some grease on this surface for that little spindle seal here to ride against. So it's not running dry. go. Started. So here we go. Nice clean caliper bracket dust shield things. Now I can tighten this down and torque it to spec. And I do believe these are lock nuts given how the impact gun even on its lowest setting is getting some resistance from tightening down these nuts which makes sense you don't want these coming loose so just like tightening up a wheel I'll tighten these up in a crisscross pattern And then torque them down. Lower. There we go. Get that torque wrench. Seat them down.
All right. 40 foot pounds and a crisscross pattern. These are very loose. But we'll get there. Done. Now time to get the rotor assembly on there. I don't want to necessarily grease up this spindle. I do want to grease this part over here. Uh, that I do want to grease up. Because that's where the seal is going to ride. Right on that. But, this is where the race, the inner race and the outer race for the wheel bearings go. Well, the inner race for the inner bearing and the inner race for the inner outer bearing. You don't want those spinning. It looks like this is a little discolored. It might have spun at some time. It's not going to kill you to get some grease in there, but you don't want to encourage it to spin. So, let's get that. This is the rotor I just pressed those studs into. Slides nice and tight. Let's get that inner bearing to go. This is a heavy one. There we go. That's on. Now for the outer bearing and the nuts. All right. Get some of this grease on the race in there all the way around it. And we got plenty here on this bearing. Stick it in there. Make sure it spins, and that spins beautifully. Now I'm going to clean off this rotor before I put the brakes on. First, got to lock that down. Lock it down first with this lock nut that has the pin on it, because that will seat. Then this locking ring will fit into a tab on the spindle, on the top of the spindle and hold that pin in place to prevent this locking nut from backing off and then this locking nut goes on to lock the whole assembly together Make sure you don't put that backwards. You don't want that pin pointing inward. All right, let's get the spindle nut. Tighten it down. So you tighten it down while spinning the wheel so that we're not jamming those rollers on the bearings into place. And you spin it while torquing it down to 50 foot-pounds. And that takes out all the slack, but you don't leave it at that. That's way too tight. That's just to seat the bearings. There we go. Now, see, it still spins, but that's way too tight. Especially once those bearings heat up, you would destroy. You destroy that wheel hot bearing. So, now back it off. And then they say, tighten it to 35 foot-pounds. This is one set of specs. Tighten it to 35 foot-pounds and back off a third of a turn. 
Let's see what kind of play that gives us. Then one third of a turn back. Let's see how much play we have with that one third of a turn. Any in and out play? No. That's not a bad spec. So, now to get this lock ring to sit over the pin. I put it in and that pin is right between two of those holes. So it just so happens that they clock this ring so that if it's off by right between the holes flip it around and that might come close to lining up. There we go, it's almost there. Not much room to work with the fat fingers I got here. I'm gonna go get my pick so I can pull that out, no problem. One thing you do is use your pair of needle nose pliers to grab the holes, back it off just a tiny bit, and that should line up the pin with the hole. Give that a shot. Almost there. turn, or 180 degree turn, what we got? We lined up. We are lined up. Now, tighten the outer lock nut. And you do tighten this to 50 pounds. and confirm that the wheel spins freely. Reset this to 50. What do we got? Perfect. No play. Spins freely. But no, not loose. Alright, at this point, it's just time to put on the brakes. After I clean off that rotor, with all the grease and dirt that gets on, no matter what, how careful you are. You might see some of this fresh paint going onto it. That's not a problem. There we go. Alright. Next, it's installing that locking hub and the outer cover. The inner hub, this clutch mechanism goes in first. Thin coating of grease on the splines here. You don't want to overload it. Thin coating of grease on the inside of the splines. So when this engages, it will lock the inner and the outer together and the outer hub, the knob is going to do that. 
for now. You just have to slid it, slide it over both the splines on the stub shaft and the splines here on the hub. And lock it in place in two ways. There you go. Spread that grease around. And I went and bought that kit. from Warren, which includes a new snap ring that goes in this outer groove. Just get it started and then push that in and it, according to its name, snaps into place. There we go. So that's not coming out. And now I have to get my pliers here and while pushing on the back of the axle shaft make sure that this goes into the, the little groove on that shaft might have to pry on the back of this to pull it forward a bit. There we go. And that snaps into place. Make sure it spins around in that groove so that it's actually seated. There we go. So that's the out that's the inner clutch. Now it's time for this outer hub. One thing I have to do is install the O-ring from the kit around the circumference there. And then this will just slide right into place. These three tangs, three tangs here, slide into the spaces on the sides of the clutch. But let's get that O-ring. Okay. Push this O-ring on. And if you're not familiar with installing O-rings like this, just roll it around and then put a thin coat of grease because it's got to slide into that hub. You don't want a dry o-ring catching on a dry hub and tearing or pulling out of that little bore. It doesn't happen often, but it could happen. There we go. And that worn kit comes with six brand new screws. So pretty. For attaching this hub. That little Allen key I was using to fish out that lock ring. It's the same one I use to tighten these screws down. And again, tighten them in a crisscross pattern. I think it's a 964. Is that what this Allen key is? Somewhere in that range. Don't strip these threads. Now I checked the operation of the hub before I installed it, before I uh, brought it out to the driveway to install it and the free and lock operations work just fine. I'll confirm that in just a second. There we go. Free. Locked. And here it turning the axle, which since the other side is up in the air, that's going to rotate. Turn it to free again. Turn it to lock. And it pops right into place. There we go. I'm just going to install the brakes. I don't think you need me to see me do that. And my axle's all done. I could have let this go, but I like having, with any new vehicle, a fresh start. So this gives me a good head start, knowing the insides of this hub are not going to grind themselves to death as I drive this truck. 
All right, I hope you found some of this useful. Go out there, work on your own truck. Good luck, and see you in the next video. Again, click like, subscribe, I think ring a bell. I don't know what that is. Thank you for watching. Okay, just a quick little detail. The factory hubs have the little free and lock indicators embossed inside the cap, which you can make out, but it's a little easier to see if you highlight them. And here, you can see I've highlighted this one with some red paint, which is an easy thing to do with one of these paint markers you can get for six dollars the art store you get the paint flowing and then press down and get it to flow into each of these grooves for the letters as well as for the dial and don't worry if it's going to be over the edge of that we're going to clean that up you need enough paint to get in there and fill those grooves then you gotta let it dry there we go see how that lock all those grooves are filled in with paint just enough to fill it in let it flow into each of those grooves And then, when it dries, when that paint is solidified in there, you can come back with some steel wool and clean off all the excess off the, ray, off the surface of the chrome, leaving the grooves filled with paint and give you a nice, clean, bright lettering of where free and where lock is. Not necessary, but it's a nice little detail.